Good morning and welcome to the Killick and Co market update. As we've talked about many times previously, some companies have fared much better than others during the course of this pandemic. And we were really interested to see some very strong results from McDonald's that were published this week. And this was a great example of prior investments in technology starting to pay off. Over the last few years, McDonald's has invested heavily in drive through capabilities, online marketing capabilities, and also delivery capabilities. And all of these things have helped the company to do well over the last quarter. And furthermore, the company has simplified its menu during the lockdown, which has helped it to get more customers through its drive through queues more quickly. And finally, the company has made the most of some celebrity collaborations, including releasing a limited edition meal in conjunction with musician Travis Scott. And that led to a 20% increase in downloads of the McDonald's app in the second half of September. And all of this success led McDonald's to raise its dividend for the 40th consecutive year. And that really is quite something in a year when so many other companies have been forced to cancel their payouts. Here's a share price chart showing what McDonald's shares have done over the last five years. And as you can see, the share price is higher now than it was before this pandemic started. This week, Boris Johnson gave a speech where he pledged that within the next 10 years, the UK would be generating enough renewable power to power every single home in the country. Many have criticised this point as being too ambitious, but bear in mind that UK homes only make up about one third of the UK's overall electricity demand, with the rest coming from offices and factories. Let's take a look at the current sources of UK electricity generation. This is an updated version of a chart that I've shown on here relatively recently, and it shows the different sources of UK electricity generation going all the way back to 1998. On this one, there are two noteworthy points. Have a look at the grey, which shows the use of coal. And as you can see, that has declined to virtually nothing over the last few months. And then have a look at the green. That's our generation coming from wind and solar power. Just look at that spike that's happened over the last quarter. And that's why I wanted to show an updated version of this chart, despite having shown it relatively recently. There are huge amounts of investment going into, into new renewable infrastructure all over the world right now. So please do give us a call if you'd like to hear more about our thoughts on this trend. One clear trend during the pandemic has been an increase in the level of digital payments, and there are a number of different reasons for this. More people are at home ordering more things online, lots of shops are no longer accepting cash, and people are less willing to touch cash, bearing in mind that it's not seen as very hygienic. This week, Capgemini released its annual report into the world payments market, and it contains some really interesting charts and projections. Here's a chart going all the way out to 2023, predicting the annual level of growth in non-cash transactions. The bar chart shows the absolute level of expected transactions, and the table shows the annual growth rate. Globally, Capgemini expect to see a growth rate in non-cash transactions of over 11% per year. That really is quite a significant level of growth, and it does imply that there still does remain quite a big opportunity for any companies involved in digital payments. Moving on to take a look at next week, it's quite a big one for the US banking sector, and we've got results out from Citigroup, JP Morgan, and Goldman Sachs. That's it from us. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.